Welcome to the Magic and Mystery School. I'm Jeff McBride, and I'm here with the Dean of the Magic and Mystery School, Eugene Berger. And our Associate Dean, Dr. Lawrence Haas. But we can call you Larry, right? Yes, Larry. Okay. <laughs> We're here with the students of the Magic and Mystery School, and we have an essential reading list of the greatest books that we've found influenced our magic and can help our students. And we're going to do our top three picks, starting with um, Dr. Haas. What do you got for us? Well, um, I put my three books in the order in which I read them. Um, so my very first uh, essential piece of reading is by the Dean, uh, The Experience of Magic. And one reason uh, I go back and reread this book regularly and, um, and, um, and recommend it as, as often as possible is that this book, more than any other book I've ever read, treats magic with complete loving respect. I've never read another magic book that treats our art with the kind of respect that you give to it here. And I will tell you, in the early days as I was becoming a magician, seeing someone treat magic with this kind of respect made me respect it, made me realize that this was a world that I could come into. So, I never well, told you. you that before. No. Uh, my next piece of essential reading uh, would be uh, Juan Tamaris, The Five Points in Magic. This is the earlier edition from Editorial Fraxen but it's now available uh, from Hermetic Press. And um, this book went in a very different direction because this book is about how to use your body effectively to communicate when you're performing magic. The eyes, the voice, your hands, your body, your positions of your body. And um, since reading this book, I have had theater, more theater training and uh, read other kinds of things, but this is an essential place, first place to go to learn how to use your body more effectively when you perform. And uh, the third um, set of books that really rocked my world was Tommy Wonder's The Books of Wonder, Volume 1 and Volume 2. Um, if you haven't read these books, I recommend them. They are some of the greatest works in magic in the 20th century. Um, Tommy shares his world-class magic in every other essay, or in, in every other unit. Tommy shares his world-class magic. But then he also has short essays to teach us some of the deep secrets he's learned from a lifetime of performing. Um, these, uh, but moving back and forth between his uh, philosophical pieces and his magic um, was an inspiration for me when I was writing my first book, Transformations. Well, one of the books that I started with was The Tarbell Course in Magic. This is very uh, practical information. And this book taught me that magic is a very exotic and esoteric art form mm -hmm. as well. He has lots of uh, costumes and scripts in here. Uh, this is just one of the, how many volumes are there? Eight, Eight. volumes now? Uh, so this is one of the books I go back to again and again and again. And I think Richard Hatch says it, if you want new ideas, read old books. If you want old ideas, read new books. But I go back to the old books again and again and again. Uh, a book that came out recently in the last couple of years is Maximum Entertainment by Ken Weber. I believe it's still in print. You can get copies around. Maximum Entertainment is filled with techniques for performers to refine their shows. Microphone techniques, staging techniques, blocking techniques. I've used many of the ideas in the book to enhance my show and, and my lecture as well. Just simple things like getting to the venue early to rearrange the room to make it uh, an effective room for you to work and put in that center aisle so you can go down the center of the room and reach the people making entrances exits how to work with microphones and assistants and it's a wonderful wonderful book my third book my third selection here is art and magic by sh sharp this is a book of of, of the collected uh, short works of uh, sam sharp who was a friend of mine towards the latter years of his life and it's filled with inspiration and poetry, and it's very uplifting. So whenever I need 
a new source of inspiration other than the dean of the Magic and Mystery School, I look between this book and it's, it's like looking inside of myself and the souls of other magicians. It's a great, great inspirational read. Eugene. Well, I have three books too. Uh, my first would be uh, Max Holden's Programs of Famous Magicians. And uh, this book came out in 1937, and one of the things I like about it is, first of all, these fabulous illustrations of these people. This is not a book of how to do it. This is a book of what people did. It's the it, lists of their acts. It just describes their program. Of their tricks in order. Right. And so you can find out what Houdini did and Thurston and all these very famous people. And um, uh, I just love this book. Uh, Greater Magic. Mm. I, I think it's the best single volume on magic in the English language. And of course, not only that, you can use it to disable intruders it's because so it is so big. Put your legs uh, asleep yes. reading that book. <laughs> yes, don't read it in bed, it's very dangerous. Now, uh, this is the Richard Kaufman edition, which is really uh, a wonderful one because this whole amount here is all new material. That wasn't in the original? Right, mm -hmm. it's tricks that they, that they cut, it's uh, the story of how, how uh, Harlan Tarbell got to be the illustrator, uh, a lot of politics there, and uh, so on. This is just a marvelous, marvelous book. And it's all different types of magic, oh, like yes. the Tarbell Chorus. Right. There's, there's, there's coin magic, mentalism, card magic, stage illusions. And a quite wonderful essay on stage presentation by Fu Manchu, David Bambrook. So this is one of my favorite books. And the last one is actually a series of books, four of them, uh, the Thayer Instruction Sheets. Imagine you could get a copy of probably the best magic catalog of the best magic company in the early part of the 20th century. And you're looking through this catalog, and wouldn't it be nice to know what it was all about? Uh -huh. What you find here are, first of all, the catalog description, and then the actual instruction sheet that came with the trick. And I always recommend this book to newcomers in magic because it teaches you how to read a magic catalog and not get caught up in dreams. Uh, Thayer, as you'll discover, was pretty honest in his descriptions, much more honest than uh, the, magician, the magic ads that we read today. He was really honest, and yet, uh, what did you get? What was what, what the trick? Well, there are four volumes. It covers the entire catalog, pretty much. Illusions, mentalism, coins, cards, you name it. And it's just a very educational read. So there are four volumes of this, and this is by Glenn Gravatt, and it's called The Thayer Instruction Sheets. I think it's important to read good books. Uh, one of the things that happens is we forget to do that, and is Every artist and, ma and great magician that I know are people who read books. You don't have to read fast. You don't have to read constantly. But spending some time with great magic books is the way we learn and become much better in this art form. And the fact really is, I mean, that people who read books about magic are better magicians than people who just watch television and, and DVDs. And you can have a conversation the with the other magicians that read these books. One of the ways that Eugene and I met is Eugene would leave me books or send me books, and then we'd have something to talk about. We'd have a topic of, of common ground to go back and forth, and that's what led to our friendship that uh, eventually led to this school. And we want to thank Lawrence Haas, Dean Berger, and all the students of the Magic and Mystery School, and we'll see you here in Las Vegas at one of our courses or online soon. I'm Jeff McBride. Thanks for watching. Thank you.